Hello, my name is Takako, and I'm a researcher and an instructor of the BioClock Studio at UC San Diego. Today, we are in the Goldman Lab, where I will show you how we study circadian rhythms in neurons using a bioluminescence reporter. Specifically, in this video, I will show you the basics of how we can visually monitor circadian rhythms in the SCN of a mouse using a luciferase reporter. Circadian rhythms in mammals are controlled by the suprachiasmatic nucleus, referred as SCN. The SCN is found in the hypothalamus, right on top of the optic chiasm, where the two optic nerves from the eyes cross. The optic nerve delivers light input from the retina. The SCN contains about 20,000 neurons and controls circadian patterns of behaviors, such as sleep and wake, hormone secretion, such as melatonin and cortisol, and other physiological functions, such as heart rate and body temperature. In mammals, the SCN functions as a central pacemaker that adjusts the circadian rhythms of the whole body, synchronizing the peripheral clocks in other organs. To observe circadian rhythms in individual neurons in the SCN, we use a mouse line expressing the fusion protein of a clock gene called PAR2 and luciferase. There are several techniques to insert a luciferase gene in mice. Our mouse line is generated by the gene knocking method. In the mouse line we use in today, the PAR2 DNA sequence in a genome is replaced by a sequence encoding part 2 fused to luciferase, creating a fusion protein. This way, light will be produced proportional to how much part 2 is present. This part 2 luciferase no queen mouse line was first generated in a laboratory at Northwestern University and donated to our laboratory. Part 2 is an important core crop component that generates circadian rhythms at the molecular level through transcription, translation feedback loops. Part 2 protein levels exhibit circadian rhythms in the SCN and most tissues in the body. Luciferase fused to Part 2 reports the level of Part 2 protein. We use Part 2 protein expression as a marker or hand of the clock that allow us to tell time. By looking at what point part 2 protein is in its daily cycle, we can infer the time of day because it is known when it peaks and drops. To prepare the sample for the experiment, we first humanely euthanize the mouse. We extract the whole brain carefully to avoid damaging the hypothalamus. Brains are stored in ice cold saline. Here you can see the extracted mouse brain. We cut the hypothalamus out of the brain. Once we have dissected the hypothalamus, we glue the hypothalamus containing the SCN onto a specimen holder and hold it in place with a piece of 2% agarose gel. Then we will use a specialized instrument called the vibratome to carefully prepare very thin slices of the dissected hypothalamus. The vibratome water bath is filled with ice-cold saline and the brain slices are cut slowly with the vibrating blade to minimize the damage to neurons. For imaging purposes, we will slice into 200 micrometer thickness. In front of the SCM, the optic chiasm form a thick triangular shape. Right under the SCM, the optic chiasm is flat and forms a symmetric round dent. The SCM can be identified as gray spots of about 1 mm width. The optic chiasm and the SCM are trimmed with knives. The SCM slice is transferred on a culture insert in a sterile petri dish with medium that contains luciferin. We seal a plane with grease and a parafilm. 
Finally, we will load the sample dish to the imaging system with a very sensitive cold CCD camera. This sample is kept at 37 degrees Celsius by a heater. Inside this chamber, it's completely dark. Bioluminescence is a very faint light, so it is very important to eliminate any stray light coming into the chamber. At first, we check the focus of the microscope on the SCN with the light zone using bright field imaging. Once that is said, we now keep the cell in total darkness except for the light produced by the luciferin luciferase reaction. Every 30 minutes, we take a picture with a 29 minutes exposure time of the bioluminescence. After several days of recording, we compile the images and create a video of a stack file to observe how PAR2 luciferase was exposed throughout the SEN over time. Bioluminescence intensity of single neurons is analyzed using metamorph. We select a region of interest in the stack file. The values within the region are exported to Excel. Circadian rhythm parameters such as strength of rhythm, period, phase, and amplitude are analyzed in another specialized software. This is the phase map of part two part two generated by MATLAB. We use MATLAB script made by Dr. Lizy at Amherst College. Here we see the phase leading part in blue and lagging part in red. Using MATLAB, we can visualize spatiotemporal patterns of part two rhythms. With these techniques, we can study synchrony within SCN cells, the effect of drug or different light conditions, and compare wild-type SCN with a mutant strain. Thank you for watching this video. If you are interested in circadian biology and want more information, please visit BioCroc Studios website.